So what's going on Warriors? Uh, it's been a minute since I've uh, made a video. I uh, wanted to upload uh, one today called uh, Being Hard on Yourself but with a Purpose. So, you know, through my, through my coaching experience right now, I see uh, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the girls get frustrated with, um, you know, missing a shot and, you know, kind of having this body language where they're kind of like they droop their shoulders and things. And, and that's okay because, you know, when we're trying to learn a task, you know, that's going to happen where you're going to get frustrated with yourself. But uh, for my journey in, in regards to that type of negativity, it's uh, a matter of finding those things that you don't like about yourself and being honest with those and acknowledging those in the context of tennis. You know, when I started, I couldn't hit the ball. You know, I obviously wasn't very good at what I was doing, and I was kind of wondering my uh, role in the whole, you know, sports world, you know, because I was, you know, a nerdy kid, so I wanted to have some sort of identity apart from that. But so when you are going through your journey and trying to make decisions and, and, and work through certain situations, you have to be hard on yourself because you can't call to yourself and be like, oh, well, okay, it's all right, it's all fine. Sometimes it's not gonna, it's not fine. And you have to find a way to uh, kind of enumerate some of those issues that you have about yourself, whether it's uh, through, through sports or academics or a relationship or how you handle grief or your emotional uh, outbursts and things. You have to be able to quantify those. And I'm a big advocate of journaling. And you'd be amazed at what you can accomplish by just journaling those certain uh, areas of where you want to work on yourself and then start setting a goal and plans to make yourself better. So, and in order to really figure out uh, what you don't like about yourself, obviously you have to live your life and, and go through your life and realize, are you seeking external validation in a sense of where whenever you engage in a task, everyone else is kind of laying accolades on you and saying, oh, you're so great and you're so amazing? Or are you trying to find internal validation where if there was nobody else around and you were just out on court and hitting serves and you hit five of your best serves of your life and there was no one there to witness it, and but before you're, and your mind says, I can't serve, I'm nobody, like I can't do this, but then you prove to yourself that you can that's internal validation. And internal validation is the path of most resistance. It's too easy nowadays, especially with social media and YouTube and other things, to have all these things and all these people external to your experience say, oh, you're so great, you're so amazing. And, and it, this happens at the highest levels of tennis and highest levels, levels of sports where you see your heroes and they're like, you're, they're hitting these amazing shots, you know, like Roger Federer or Diego Schwartzman or these guys, Nadal. And they do these amazing things. You're like, wow, you know, they're incredible. But I tell you, when the doll loses a match, it eats away at him and his mind. So that for him, no amount of external validation from having 80,000 fans, millions watching, you know, at home or on streaming or whatever, could ever, ever crack the code of his internal validation. So at, at that level and his level of mental strength, he is hard on himself. He said, I mean, I should have played this better. Or when he pushed me out wide, I didn't take it down the line or had this great opening and I missed it. But for him, he has the mental fortitude to realize, okay, t today, even after this match or even tomorrow, first thing in the morning, I'm going to hammer this until I get it. And that's the biggest difference of being hard on yourself. So a lot of people, they are hard on themselves and that's their default position. I suck. I am no good. And that's, they don't do anything to challenge that. So as soon as you start to have those emotions of where, okay, I'm not very good at this task, the next question you have to ask yourself is, what can I do to overcome this? And in my own journey, that is what has carried me through to where I am and have the level of success I have today, is that, you know, going into coaching, getting myself out of the 3-5 the leagues, you know, pushing myself, trying to find my best, the best version of myself, and realizing that I am on my journey, and my journey is carrying me forward on this path, and I have to trust that no matter if there's a million people who see this or there's one, me, I have to be the one to validate that. It can't be anyone else. Now, the external validation is nice. I mean, it's nice to have a coach tell you that you're doing well, but if you don't believe it in your mind, then it's, it's all for naught. So you have to work on figuring out what you don't like about yourself, 
and figuring out what you can do to overcome that. And as you're doing that and you're being hard on yourself and being negative, you have to take every one of those negatives and put a positive, you know, just like two ne negative and positive energy. You have to match it up. What can I do to overcome this certain situation? And you'll actually surprise yourself of how much you can grow and over the time if you take this methodology and put it into practice. But it's going to take work. It is the path of most resistance. It's, it's too easy to be uh, seek external validation and be like, well, okay, I'm good. You know, everyone says I'm all right, but I don't feel all right. You won't ever feel all right until you start putting in the work and start when no one else is around. There's nobody else around for a thousand miles and you're the only one out there getting after it. That's when you're going to start building yourself up and building up your self-esteem and your confidence and know, okay, well, what's the next block of things I don't like about myself now that I'm on this different frequency? Uh, so that's all I got for this one. I'll catch you in the next one.